Okay, so we've got all the hand artwork part of this done. We've got our gradient map for the ground cover done. We've got our gradient map for the tufts done. We are going to need one more gradient map, and that's going to be for the underlying sort of grassy noise that I'm going to make. And for that, we're going to come into the library, and we're going to go for Messy Fibers. I believe it is number three. Yes, number three. And it's a pretty heavy um, noise, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. So I'm going to bring it down to parent minus one. And we're going to be wanting a transform 2D for this also, because I'm going to want it smaller. Now, I bet you we can bring this down to parent minus two. And we're going to make sure that we set this transform 2D node to be relative to parent. So it's going to step it back up to whatever our parent size is. And I'm going to have this as the sort of underlying moss or mulch, if you will. Let's call it mulch. And we're going to step that way down. I mean, let's bring it down. It, we're probably going to have to step it down a bit more. But I just want to see what it actually looks like. And let's get our colors squared away. So this one, I think I want the brownest and yellowest of them all. I'm going to kind of keep the same tones. I'm just going to change the actual colors on it. And I'm going to just yellow them out. That should be okay. And it is going to get a lot smaller, but it's going to be just this simple. So we have our three gradient maps. Each one of them is going to have a hue saturation lightness with, um, with a function on it. So we're going to leave that for now. And let's start with sort of this, what we're going to build the ground cover on top of. So we've got this, what we're calling mulch for now. And underneath that, I want to uh, get some dirt. And for that, I used black and white spots. And again, I'm going to step this down parent minus two, and I'm going to bring a, another, well, I might as well just, I'll duplicate this transform 2D node. And the reason I'm duplicating it is because it's already set to parent. And I'm going to copy this gradient node, and now we're going to make our dirt color. I could have made a new one, but I didn't. Fairly decent dirt color. And we're going to want clouds. I believe I had clouds too. Doesn't really matter which one. Again, we're going to step it down. We don't need all 2K worth of information here. And I'm going to get a levels node, and I'm going to set this levels node to be relative to parent, and that's going to step it up for me. And we're going to get a blend node. Uh, let's get a couple more of these. And we're going to take our mulchy stuff, and we're going to lay it on top of our dirt. Oh, let's do the colors first, actually. Well, we've got it all set up according to this. It's just kind of harder to see if I'm doing the normals. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this out, and we'll do it for the colors because we're going to use the same mask. Right, so let's plug that into our color, and let's plug this into our normal. And then we can go back to our levels node and decide how we want just the mulch versus the dirt to go. And I'm definitely going to want that mulch smaller. So I'm going back to the Transform 2D, and we're going to make it smaller. That's probably good. So I think maybe a bit more dirt, a little less mulch. That's all right. OK, so let's think of the most logical way to do this, because we're actually going to keep repeating this. It's going to be almost identical for all our various channels, the way we're setting this up. Next, we want to take, we've got our background here, and we want to start applying our ground cover. Now, before we apply these two, we have to decide, you know, we're going to have this one on top of this one. But 
we still need to make the, I just realized, we need to make the effects maps for these. So let's go ahead and do this. It's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to take an effects map, I'm going to switch it to grayscale, and I'm going to do my three inputs in here. And before we go any further, let's make our input parameters. It'll probably simplify things. First one we're going to do, and this is going to be for our effects map, we're going to have our ground cover type. And this is going to be an integer, and we're going to use a drop-down list. So we have a zero value already. We're going to call that one type fun, and we're just going to add two more types. All right, that's done. Let's do our size as well, because we're going to deal with that right now as well. So I'm going to make another one, and we're going to have a size. And this is going to be a float one, and it's going to be default. I'm going to leave the default one right now, and that's going to be our biggest size. We may decide later on that we want to leave it at 0.5, but for now I'm going to leave it at one. Right. So first let's do our effects map. I'm going to right click on my effects map. I'm going to hit edit effects map. And I'm going to add a quadrant by hitting the space bar, and that's just going to edit in right there. And I think just, I think that's going to be big enough. Let's take a look. We can always add more quadrants up in here if we want to make the size smaller. But let's start building our functions. Now we're going to start, we're going to build it all on our color luminosity channel, and we're going to start with the simple stuff. We're going to our pattern is going to be, well, actually, we're going to, our pattern, let's set this up now, is going to be our ground cover type. Because this is an integer, so if it's zero, if our ground cover type is zero, it's going to take pattern zero. If our ground cover type is, you know, the second one, it's going to take one. So this is just a straight up integer in here, is going to change the pattern according to what we have set in here. So one, two, three. So this is type one, type two, type three. And as those types are changed, it's going to decide which input image it's going to use. So that's that done. Other than that, we're going to just do um, pattern offset, pattern size, and pattern rotation, like we've done a gajillion times before. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make an empty function. And we're going to start adding nodes. I'm going to do them all at once. Uh, we've gone through this so many times. I'm just going to put it together. OK, let's build these guys. For our offset, we are going to want to have two separate numbers, you know, two, two random numbers. So I'm going to have two random nodes here. I'm going to set them into the X and Y. And we are going to set our variable, and here we have to hand type it in, offset. The next one we're going to do is going to be our size. But I want the size to stay, I mean, I want them to be proportionally the same, different sizes, but I don't want them to stretch at all. So I want my X and my Y values to be equal. So I'm only going to use the one random node here. But we're going to plug it in to the X and the Y, and that's going to be our size. And finally, for our rotation, that's actually just going to be a float 1, because it's, you know, it's going from 0 to 1, so that equals 0 to 360. And we'll call that rotation. And then we just start plugging stuff in. And we're going to sequence this out. And the final information in our sequence is what actually belongs in this slot. And that's the number one for our opacity or luminosity. I mean, it, it, if it's set at zero, it's not, you're not going to see anything. OK. Now, theoretically, this is all good, except I already know that I'm going to want my size to be bracketed out, which I'm going to do right now. The way this is set up right now, it's going to pick a random number between 0 and 1. I don't want any of my ground cover to be like at a number near 0. I want them all to be, you know, within a certain size range. I'm going to pick, you know, I'm going to get a float right now. I'm going to set it to 0.5 
for the moment. We may change that number slightly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an if-else statement. And this if-else statement is going to determine, it's going to, it's going to put a floor on, on what the size can be. So if this random number between 0 and 1 is less than 0.5, I want it to be 0.5. Otherwise, have it be that random number. And we're going to take the results of that and we're going to stick it in here. And then we, we, we can adjust this number to once we see it up in here and we can change that slightly. But let's set that as our output node. And now we have to go back into the rest of the, um, of the effects map and we're going to have to add those in. Let's come into our quadrant, and for our branch offset, I'm going to go empty function, add node, variables, get float2, and then we're going to type in, because remember, when we set a variable, it does not appear on our drop-down list. We're going to set offset, and we're going to set that as our output node. I'm going to come back into our quadrant. Oh, I just did branch offset. That was silly. I want pattern offset. Uh, then we have our pattern size. I'm going to do the same thing. And finally, our rotation. And here we're going for a float one. So we've got everything set in. And all we need to do now is... Oh, you know what I did? I think I set this up wrong. Yeah, pattern. That was done. I pattern, I want pad input image, and I actually want to set my um, image in index to ground cover type. My bad. So just to show what I did, I made a mistake. By mistake, I put, a, I put it on here on the actual pattern, which should be set to image input, and the function actually goes on the number of, you know, it goes in the index. And now we have what we need to see in here. Now, the only other thing we need to do is, uh, I forgot, we have to add an iteration. We'll set that as our root. And now let's decide how big we want these things. So again, I'm just going to plug it into here for now. So it's set at our largest version right now. And that is just way, way, way too big. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to hit my space bar. I'm going to add a quadrant. That's going to make it smaller. I think for the absolute biggest, that might be right. Don't forget, we, only, we still only have one quadrant set in here, so it's going to be a lot denser. So the iterations we're going to set back down. I just want to get an idea of what the size is. I think that's probably OK. So let's go ahead and copy this out three more times. OK. And I'm just going to duplicate this effects map. And I'm going to do the same thing here for our uh, leaf litter. Now, let's just um, I'm going to show you this before we fix it so you know what I'm fixing. Oh, well, we might as well make this now. We're going to need to make a mask for this, so I'm going to get a levels node. I'm going to come into this effects map, and I'm going to make a mask that's going to deal with anything coming out of that effects map by making this completely white. So if, if it's there, it's white, and it's blocked out. And if I put this, if we look here, you'll notice that our tufts are sitting exactly on top of our leaf litters. And the reason it's doing that is because they have the same random seed. Now, if you remember, these things, these effects maps are Markov chains. So each one of them, you know, there's a random number here that gets randomized again, that gets randomized again, that gets random, you know. So if the seed is the same on both of these effects maps, the result is going to be the same. So what I need to do uh, is I need to change the random seed on one of these. I, I've got this one up here already set in. I'm looking at it here, so I'm just going to do this one. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter which one you do. In fact, any of these um, nodes here have 
you know, a random seed option. I'm going to go up into the iterate node and just set it there. So I'm going to set it to a different number. It does not matter what that number is. And if we come back in here and look at these results, we'll see that now they are not sitting on top of each other because they are both working off different random seeds. And that's that problem solved. I'm going to duplicate this levels node and I'm going to make one for this guy here. So it's going to be the same idea only for our leaf litter. And we are going to need the two of them together as well. So we may as well make that mask, which we're going to use later on, that's going to combine these two masks. And we're going to use a blend node with a lighten blend. So that's those two combined. And I'm, not, I'm going to leave this hue saturation alone because I'm, we're going to put a function on this one and we're going to copy it out. And that's our colors. So we've got that far. Let's make our normals match. So this is our underlying stuff we've done. We're going to blend it on top of our leaf litter. And we're going to use this combined mask. And we'll get that plugged in. And then we'll do the same thing to the normals. So we've got our dirt underneath. And we have to come up with a normal map for each one of these guys. I'm going to duplicate this. And we just keep doing, I mean, we're doing the same thing to all of these various uh, channels. So that's the normals for our two things on top. We've already got the normals for the dirt. And that gives us the normals that we need here. Everything is super shiny, but it's starting to look like something. Okay. Now, we've already made the input parameter for the size. So let's go ahead and input that now. I'm going to get a transform 2D. And let's start with this first one and get it to work on here. And then we can apply it to all the other guys. So if we look at our parameter, it's a float one. And when we change sizes in a transform 2D node, we actually have to make this number bigger if we want it to be smaller. So it, it, it's easier to think of like how many tiles do you want in this space? So if I want two tiles, it's going to make it smaller like that. Oh, I just realized we forgot. What we need to do to this guy also is we need to set it so that the tiling mode is absolute and not tiling because we don't want these tiled. We want them to get bigger and smaller. So this is going to be my smallest size at number two in the matrix. And my largest size is going to be number one. So that means that the function that I'm going to put on here wants to run backwards between one and two, which is actually pretty easy to do. So our float for value is one zero zero one. If you if you've never done effects maps, uh, please check some of my other uh, some of my other videos. But this is the default that we should end up with, you know, our in our float for value. So when it's at its smallest, this wants to be 2002. And when it's at its biggest, it wants to be 1001. So that's just up there as a reminder. Let's get a constant. Actually, we're going to need two of them. So we have our 1 and our 0. Now, we're also going to need our variable. We're going to need our ground cover size. And because we're going to be running it backwards, first thing we need to do is we need to take that ground cover size and subtract it from the number one. And that's going to just reverse the way that it moves. The other thing that we're doing is we're not running it from zero to one. We're running it from one to two. So whatever this result is, we need to add the number one to it. And that's it. Now we just have to create that float four variable. So we're going to need to vector a couple of float twos. And we're going to need to vector a float four. And we're going to go into our pattern. So we have one result, zero, zero, and this result. And that is going to be our output. 
So if we come back in here and look at our image, and then we go into our parameters, so it's at its biggest now, and then as I move this number down, once I've hit zero, um, it's still there. Now, that's cool. Uh, if you would like the number zero to make it disappear, we can come back in here. I just want to double check something because I've never done it this way. I'm going to get another transform node because I'm pretty sure that if we set this number to zero in the matrix, it'll give us nothing. But before I say that with assuredness, I'm going to actually double check. So hopefully if we set all of these to zero, we get zero. Yeah, it's not the zero I want. It gets, okay, we're going to do it a different way. If you want this to go to zero, and I'm going to blend node, and if I bring this opacity to zero, it gives me nothing. So that's going to work. And all I need to do is come in here, create an empty function, and we're going to create an if-else statement. Actually, it's, a, it's not an integer, it's a float, sorry. Okay. So if our ground cover size equals zero, then zero. And this is talking about our opacity. Otherwise, we have full opacity. So it's at zero, it's zero. But then the minute I go to point 0.1, it's at its smallest size. And then it'll grow as it goes. So that, that'll shut it off. And I'm going to do that for these top ones. We're not going to shut off these bottom ones. So we can, we can fix it so that it's only leaf litter and the stuff underneath. So let's duplicate this out and plug them in. And now as we move our sizes around, it appears on here. So we can have our grass larger, we can have it smaller, and then we can make it disappear altogether. And let's make sure that our ground cover types are moving around too. Yeah, those leaves are passable. Okay, let's create a new variable that's going to allow us to change the hues of our litter. I want to be able to change the hue on this one. I want to be able to change the hue on this one. And I want to be able to change the hue on this one. We're going to leave the dirt alone. If you want to do the dirt, feel free. Just use a float 4 instead of a float 3, uh, which is what I'm going to do here. So let's create our input parameter. And we're going to call this uh, hue. We're going to make a float 3. We're going to have them all on the same thing. And we're going to call this hue. And we're going to call the group ground cover. And then we can assign labels. So which I'm going to have all of these at 0.5. Actually, no, what we're going to, we're going to leave them at 1. And we're going to have them in... Um, in the actual function. Because actually, this hue saturation, it runs through twice. You only really need half of that slider. Uh, we'll call this ground cover. Oh, we'll call them tufts. And then we have litter. And then we have mulch. And we'll put it all on here. And then we'll copy it out. So our variable is here. And we are going to only need one of those. So we're going to swizzle a float one. And in this particular case, it is the x. But I'm also going to multiply it by 0.5 because for hue, um, I mean, you don't want people running through it twice. It's kind of silly. So we'll just take whatever result that is and we'll multiply it by 0.5. So if we take a look at the hue and we come into our input parameters, as I move this down, it changes color. Now, depending on whether you want people to have, you know, like full color abilities is up to you. In this particular case, I think it's kind of cool, but you can limit it. It's a completely different formula. Let me, let me show you. I'm going to keep this as is because I like it this way. I'm just going to show you how to do it a different way. I'm going to take the same thing. We're just going to start all over. I'm just going to copy this stuff because we're going to use that as the base. 
Now, instead of multiplying it by 0.5, and I leave it at 1, when it hits 0.5, it's kind of hard to see. Let me do it this way. When it hits 0.5, it's the same as, as 1. So what I can also do, instead of just taking the whole thing and having it, which gives me the whole gamut, but I can't really control it, I can, I can also have it just hover around this 0.5. So I can decide, OK, the lowest, the lowest thing I want is 0.4, and the highest thing I want is 0.6, or whatever numbers you decide, or 0.55 and 0.45 which is probably better. So that's, if we take, if we take the, the sort of steps on this slider, and what I want to do actually is multiply everything, the steps, I want to have it 0.1. Let's get an operator, multiplication. So whatever this result is, I want to multiply it by 0.1. But the other thing that I want to do is I also want to limit like how low it can go and how high it can, I mean, I, basically since I'm, it's only going to go from 0 to point. I mean, I don't have to limit it at the high end. All I have to do is limit it at the low end by adding, what did we say, 0.45. So I'm going to add 0.45. So 0.45 ends up being my new 0. And then it can only step up to 1 from there. So it's only really got 10 steps. So I, I don't have to put a limit at the top end. And what this does then is it takes the slider, which is still running from 0 to 1, right? So 0 now is 0.45. And then as it runs up, at 0.5, it hits you know, 0.5. And then it just keeps going, and it gets greener. But you are limiting that number. And then you can kind of fine tune it by moving this number up and down. So this is telling it where the floor is. So that's two different ways of doing it. Well, we went through all that trouble. Let's use this one. Oh, wait, wrong one. Uh, before I copy this out, I want to do one more thing um, just to show you. And again, you can mix and match these methods depending on what you actually want to have happen. But I'm also, I can also set in stuff to change automatically depending on which one of these I use. So Coming back, for example, let's go into lightness, all right? If I have number one, I can have a certain kind of lightness. Let's say I want number one to be pretty dark. Uh, I can have number two, that's number three that we got dark. I like that dark, okay. If we go into number two, we can have that a different color, and then we can do the same thing up here. It's actually easier to show you once um, once I've got them set in. Let's, let's, let's go back to the first one. So we'll have the ground cover type 1 set in as we practice this. Okay. I'm going to come into my hue saturation lightness. I'm going to go into my lightness node, and I'm going to create an empty function. I'm going to have my ground cover type, and I'm going to set up an if-else. Now, I want to get a constant integer, a couple of them. All right. So we're going to tell the lightness what to do according to which ground cover we've got set in. So if ground cover equals 0, I'm going to have this first number be my lightness value. If ground cover equals 1, I'm going to have it be this value. Otherwise, it's going to be this value. And that's what we set in here. So let's take a look. We've got number one set up in here. And I'm going to decide what I want this lightness to be. And let's duplicate these guys out. And in this case, Make sure I'm on the right one here. So I'm clicking on that one, and now I'm clicking on this lightness, and I can adjust this accordingly. So I can get them to be kind of matchy, you know, and get them where I want. And we can take a look at number two now. So I'm on this guy. I'm on the lower one right now. So now I'm talking about the second number here. 
And let's come back up to the first one. And finally, the third one. Okay. We've got it for those two. And now, oh, you know what? Uh, we need to change for the second one. We need to go back to the hue and change this to Y. Because it was, it, we're, we're, we have them on, you know, it's a flow three. So we have to swizzle out the correct value. And finally, we have the third value for our underlying litter. And we're basically going to do the same thing. So I'm going to duplicate this out. Now we've already fixed the values how we want it for the, you know, for the other two, so we can just do this one by itself. We have number three in here. Let's come into its lightness. So we're at number three now. All right. So you know you can you can fool around with that how you want, and you you know you can take this stuff and mix and match. So you may want people to have access. Uh, you know, to be able to change the, the lightness manually and have the hue change, whatever. You know, you take these methods and you apply them where you need them. The functions remain the same. Okay, so we've got, we've got it pretty much all set up now. We've got our size, we've got our colors, and now all we need to do is fix up the rest of our mass, I mean, our maps, rather. So we have our normal, we don't have our height. What I also want to do finally for the normal though, one more thing, and it's going to help with our height, is uh, I'm going to get a bevel node. And again, it's kind of dense and I don't need all of it. I'm going to step it down. And I'm going to take just these highest bits and I'm going to plug them in here. I'm going to want it smaller, probably something like that. And I can smooth them out. And I'm going to use this for my, like, kind of to bump up the normals. I'm going to overlay that. Wow, that's really shiny. Uh, we're also going to take this down a couple of notches. But it's going to give it that, um, you know, it, it makes it look more like flowers, not just like flat stuff. And we can use this for our height as well. I'm going to drop a levels node in there. Oh, that's why it's all weird, because we forgot to... St because I stepped this down, it's getting its size information from here. We need to set this up to relative to parent. That's going to fix that. And we're going to do the same thing to this levels node. We're going to make it relative to parent, and we're going to plug the height in there. I know we're going to need to tone that down. Oh, I don't think we have the height set up. Materials, default, edit, and we'll set the height scale to 1. And then I can use this levels node to adjust that. So, you know, kind of gives it more of an undulating look. All right, I'm going to start drawing some frames around this stuff. Let's get that roughness sorted out. And we're going to essentially do the same thing. Uh, I want to get an invert grayscale. And we're doing exactly the same thing that we were doing before. So we start out with this one here. And I'm going to get a couple of levels nodes in here so we can adjust those roughnesses. But I do want them inverted because I want the things that are higher to be slightly shinier than the things that are lower. But otherwise, it's exactly the same as what we had going on before. Uh, I'm going to hook this all up first before I um, adjust it because this way we can see what we're doing in here. All right, so we've got the stuff on top done. Next in line, we have the dirt and the, um, and the mulch. So that's this guy here. So again, I'm going to... Honestly, I don't think it matters with the dirt. I'm not going to bother inverting that one. But I am going to invert this one. And I am going to get a levels node for the dirt. And again, we're going to do the same thing. And then these two, my grassy stuff, is going on top of this stuff using this mask. Uh, is that everything? I think it is. We'll find out in a minute. Okay. Let's find a good spot and start with the um, adjusting. 
Okay, let's start at the very bottom. So we've got our dirt, which is extraordinarily shiny right now. Try to get a little bit more variety in there. And next we have this mulchy stuff. I want to look at that. And now we've got our leaf litter. So I want the, the tufts to be the shiniest of all. So that's the roughness. And I believe that's done. I think we're done. Let's see what it looks like in the player. So that's number three. And number two. It's really dark in here. Number one. And we can change the sides. And we can change the hue. Oh, except um, we got the labels wrong here. So that's the mulch. That's the litter. That is correct. Something's wrong. We have to check. Something's going on with the hue there. Um. But other than that, I think it's done. I don't think the height's set in here. It is, okay. Let's go back and take a look at what's wrong with that hue. I have a pretty good idea of what's wrong with that hue, and I bet it's because I forgot to swizzle something out in here. Yep. This needs to be Y. Uh, sorry, Z. So just to double check, we've got X. Y and Z. Let's try that again. That's my tuft. That's my litter. And that's my mulch. I am not entirely satisfied with the background. I think I think it's a relatively simple fix. I think I, I want to see more contrast between what's sort of the grainy stuff and what's the dirt. So that's this right here. Yeah, I think this is also part of the problem here. better. You know, and like I said, if you if you really want to get complicated with this, you can you can actually make it more involved. You can start giving everything its own separate um, setup and uh, you know, you can get more automatic stuff going on. It, it's actually, you know, I'm just showing you how to set up the basics here, but there's um, there's a lot of functionality you can do with this. Also, you could take more time with your masks, which I'm not entirely happy with this one either. But again, you know, this is just a lesson. It's not, it's not the be all and end all. I kind of like this one. You know, oddly enough, I think the third one, the one that I wasn't sure about is the one I like the most. So there you go. It just goes to prove. Yeah. So, um, I think that's it. We're done. And I hope it's been helpful. Uh, this is, you know, it, it's a great way to get hand painted stuff that's also super useful. And you can mix and match a lot with this method. And, you know, it's just a way of easily doing hand painted stuff 
in substance. So I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.